Hi and welcome to my Drawing Hands tutorial. My name is Kev, also known as Boy Boy Wait in YouTube and in Newgrounds. And in the course of this video, I would like to share some principles that I've learned which are of great help in drawing hands, namely proportion and construction. And I'd also like to share some tips on how the hand works, some insights. And uh, in the middle of this video, I would share a Mm, time lapse video of me drawing just a step by step demonstration of drawing hands. And finally, uh, we'll recap the things that we learned in this video. And I'll share some things to remember and some things that you don't want to do when drawing hands. So, we've got a lot of things to talk about. So, let's get started. So, yeah, welcome to the proportions uh, segment of the tutorial. Uh, and I must say that proportion is a very big part of drawing hands. Uh, it's very difficult to draw something that looks proper and just looks appealing without even knowing the proportions of the, the, the hand. And I think that this is the very first thing that a beginning artist or someone that would like to draw hands must learn. And so, yeah. Let's get started. The first thing that you will notice here is that the hand is divided into two planes, or rather two parts. The first part is the hand plane, which is the square shape right here. This right here. This is the hand plane. This is the first half. And the second half is the fingers. And notice that the fingers doesn't start immediately after the second half. Because usually people draw the fingers right after here. And the knuckles right here. And if you if you observe your own fingers, you will see that this thing is wrong and there is indeed some space between the knuckles and the start of the fingers. And here we have the webbings of the hand which is the cause of the space. So yeah. And the second thing we need to learn about the proportions is that the fingers or the knuckles of the fingers are determined in arcs. You know it's right here. You see that from here to here there's an arc. And from here to here, there's an arc. So if you want to get the first, the first knuckles, which is actually right here, the first line of knuckles, the main knuckles, I like to call them, you will have to draw an arc to determine the positioning. So here we got these knuckles. And if you want to get the second knuckles of the fingers, you have to draw another arc. It's right there. Halfway, halfway between the fingers. And you get the last segment of the hands, you have to do another arc, which determines the, the top segments of the fingers. And so for the thumbs, so where's the thumb? This is mainly, the thumb is mainly just uh, very small compared to the other fingers, but you can see that it's very thick. And you can also see that the height of the thumb is a little bit near the first, uh, rather the second knuckle of the, in of the index finger. Quite near. Not that near. So yeah. And the first knuckle of the thumb is halfway in the hand plane. Okay. So yeah. And so yeah. So the last part of the proportions uh, lesson is that no rather wait. There's something more I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention that the hand is something more like a spade. Looks like looks like a spade. Like here. So the fingers are usually Concave, and at some point they will begin to touch each other's tips. And 
this is opposed to the notion that most people have of hands, like where they make the square shape first and just, they, they just draw the fingers without any tapering or concave actions, which, which, which just looks wrong, I believe. So yeah, and the last thing is the thing the the hands is mostly or commonly the same uh, was this? the same height from the chin, the forehead of a person. So something like this. This is how big the hand is for most people. So there you have it. So here we have the hand in a palm up position and for the most part the proportions are the same as, as when the hand is turned palm down but as you can see here there are some things that are added some elements that are added when the palm is turned up so the first thing you can see, the first notable, no, noticeable difference rather, is these pads right here. One, there's, there, there are three of, the, of these pads and I don't know the proper scientific names for them, but I just like to call them the upper pad. And side pad. And thumb pad. Uh, there will be more lessons on this later, but for now it's enough to know that uh, the upper pad is the space that we have seen between the knuckles and the start of the fingers uh, on the uh, previous lesson. So this is the space that we saw earlier. And as if, as when we observe when the hand is turned down, the fingers still start a bit later in the half. It doesn't start immediately after. It doesn't start immediately in the half. There's a little bit of uh, space. And uh, like I said, this is because of the upper pad. And the side pad is just this fairly halfway between the side pad and the thumb pad. They're fairly equal uh, when considering the squarish or I don't know the shape of the hand plane. And like on the earlier lesson, there's still arcs on the uh, wrinkles of the fingers. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that. The wrist, generally, is as wide as the fingers from the index to the ring finger. So from here to here, this is usually how wide the wrist is. But of course there are some adjustments, so it's a bit extended here. and. I don't know, either way it looks right, but just don't uh, push it really far as to make it equal with the edge of the hand plane. It's a bit narrower than that, so that's just uh, something to remember. And so yeah. So here I've drawn in advance a halfway hand post between a side and a front so it's like a 3 fourth hand post so we can see the things in the middle that we can see when the hand is straight up turned uh, in front and palm up so here we can see the space uh, notice that I am emphasizing this Space right here because this is where a lot of people 
messed up their hand drawings by refusing to add the space or by not knowing that there is a space between the knuckles and the start of the fingers. So, like I mentioned in the previous uh, video, or rather previous uh, part of the video, this right here is the upper palm pad, which you can see right here. It's perfectly aligned here. So it is the upper palm pad. And so yeah, uh, basically we have, as always, the arcs. Never forget the arcs of the knuckles. And the thickness, there's a bit of thickness here. Don't draw your hand planes uh, super flat because it will just mess up the look of your hands. And here you can see the error that most people make. Uh, just like to put it out there that the fingers don't, doesn't start immediately after the knuckles. So, uh, like I said earlier, there's a space here. And that's about it. And this is about the end of the proportions part of the hand tutorial video. And for the next part, we'll study construction and how the hand works. Here we have a pre-recording of myself uh, just drawing or just uh, applying some thoughts and some techniques that I've learned when constructing the hand plane. So the first thing to remember is that you have to get the direction of the hand plane first before anything else. This is the most important part of the, the construction process. So, yeah. If you get the direction of the hand plane first, this is what I say to myself. If you get the direction of the of the hand plane first, then everything else will follow. So I think it's the it's a very important step, and this is the step that you don't want to skip because all of the additional elements, the fingers, the wrinkles or knuckles, will always follow the hand plane. And you just know, uh, notice that, uh, the, like I said in the earlier lessons, the hand plane is a bit concave. So just trying to um, follow up on that thought. So that's the first thing that you need to know about the hand planes. So the second thing to know is... Hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> What's this? Oh, so yeah. So like, so like what I've written here. Uh, I think that, in my opinion, hand plane is not rigid. I think it can bend in um, different ways. And mm, I think the construction of the hand plane will determine the success of your of how the hand that you're drawing will look so as opposed to the uh, circular or rather uh, squarish uh, shape very squarish and uh, flat space or shape that you will find here uh, I'd suggest that you use a very uh, uh, I don't think the term is uh, rigid but I think uh, the material is somewhat of a solid but uh, flexible material, so yeah. And notice that I uh, left some space here for the upper palm pad because it's just it's just such a very important uh, factor in how the hand works and whatnot. So yeah. So there I drew a concave curve just to remind uh, people that the hand is mostly um, concave shape. So here I'm just drawing some uh, hand positions or other uh, hand plane positions just to show the just to show you guys the possibility and some of the different uh, ways that the hand plane can bend when using the construction method that I've uh, drawn above. So, uh, and other than being a very uh, solid uh, 
way to get the position of the hand. I think it's very fun to draw this kind of shape because... I don't know. <laughs> it's just very fun to draw. And I strongly urge you to try it. But yeah, but anyway... Hmm. Where am I right here? Oh, so yeah, uh, so here I'm just uh, repeating over and over again the uh, the one thing that most people forget, and that is the space between the knuckles and the start to uh, where the fingers start, but, which is the upper palm, uh, rather upper pad, as I've said before. So, just do remember that the upper pad is. The, this part, which can bend, and it's a crucial part that I don't know that's missing in most people's hand drawings. So I just like to repeat that. <laughs> Sorry for being just I don't know. Okay, I'm just indicating where the knuckles are. It's mostly uh, at the line of the upper pad. And don't forget that there's a space there, which is where the webbing and some fatty tissues are uh, placed. Okay, here I'm just adjusting things up so it's much more clear. Yeah, that's the that's my that's what I'm think what I'm thinking and just what just uh, what I believe is the right uh, method of construction. In here I'm just demonstrating a method that I think is inaccurate, which is um, where the knuckles are really just so close to the start of the fingers, there's no space like I've written. And I, I, don't, I don't think it looks right, and if you notice your hand, I think most of us will agree that there's a space there. So here I'm just demonstrating how the upper pad works and we add some um, mass of how the fingers look. So you can see that the top of the plane bends. Not, not totally bent, but there's some there's some uh this, there's some bending. <laughs> going on there. So yeah. And the bad example is where you just uh, use a very solid uh, hand plane and you just uh, bend the, the fingers from where the hand uh, or rather the finger where the fingers start. Let me rephrase that, sorry. It's <laughs> just confusing. Uh, I think the better, uh, rather the the incorrect method is where... Let me go back a little bit. Is where we'll create a solid, very solid plane. So there's no upper palm pad. There's, there's just rigidity. So I think it limits the range of motion that the hand can do. And it's just inaccurate. So most people do this where they... Where they uh, just bend the fingers from where, from the end, yeah, from the end of the uh, hand plane. So yeah, just move from where we stop. So here I'm just fixing the things, the lessons. So here we have um, some, I'm doing some illustrations of the pads of the palm, which I think is, um, I will not say it's crucial, but it's a huge part of getting that uh, accurate look in your hands. 
So, I'm gonna mark them by color. The first one is in the upper palm pad. Upper pad, well, which is what I've discussed earlier. I won't go into that into it again, but yeah. I think I will. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I did. I think I will draw something here. Which illustrates that again. Yes. And there it is. It can bend. Most of you already know that we we'll probably just pour it out of their minds from now. Just, what is he doing? Stone. You know, it's repetitive and stuff, but yeah. So the second uh, palm pad is the side pad, which I like to call it. I'm not sure the, of the scientific term for it, but yeah. I think side pad is enough because it doesn't move enough. So just enough to know that's there. And the last part is the thumb pad, which I think moves a lot. And I'm just gonna discuss that earlier, uh, later rather. So yeah, so you're the three palm pads. Just remember that. And I'll see you in the next lesson. So yeah, here's a pre-recorded video of me um, doing construction tips and just some advice when drawing fingers. So the first thing that you need to know is that the fingers aren't. Um, straight ahead tubes or cylinders like most people do them it has a curved and tapered shape like you see here I think organic is a very uh, nice term to think about when drawing the fingers as you can see how much of a difference that curve and taper brings out you know, as opposed to this uh, steel tube looking thingy when drawing fingers so yeah I think this curved and tapered thing is the way to go. The next thing I think is I'm adjusting it. <laughs> yeah. The next thing I think is an important uh, lesson to learn is something I learned from my animation background, which is the straight against curve principle. So when drawing fingers, this is a huge thing because we notice that your fingers, uh, the bony protrusions or the bony stiff rigid stuff is mostly seen from the top and uh, the palm uh, side or the, the bottom side is much more of a squishy fatty thing, <laughs> more, yeah, more of a curve so uh, when, applies, when it applies to the straight against curve principle the bony, which is the top part, will be the straight and the fatty portion will be the curve, which is what, which is what I'm doing here. So yeah, straight against curve. Let's move that down there. And here, I'm drawing something more of a... Uh, principle from a rendering standpoint because if you're doing 2D animation or something like that this won't really matter but I think it's still a good thing to know which are which is something to do about planes of the hand like I said before the top part of the fingers is more of a flat shape which you can see right here the mark the one marked blue and the bottom part is more of a roundish Roundish, yeah. roundish, uh, uh, what do you call this? Roundish. I don't know, I don't know how to follow up with that, but yeah. It's just enough to learn that the top part is flat and the bottom part is more of a curvy, roundish. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so here's an exercise. You have to try this. It's a better thing that you do this right now. So just you can understand what I'm depicting here. So first up, you take your, your index finger up and you try 
and try to bend the top segment alone. Don't bend the the middle segment, and just just try to bend the top segment and see if you can do it. Uh, so, and I don't think many people can actually do this. So yeah. So the second drawing depicts that you have to bend your fingers in the middle segment first before you can bend the top segment which is something that I'm drawing here as you can see so yeah uh, and I will draw an arrow so it's more of a it's more clear that you have to go through these first before you can go through this So yeah, before it can bend to top segment, the top segment. So yeah. And one exception of this is the thumb. So if you try to do that same position with your thumb, which you only bend the top segment, I think most people can do it. I can do it. So I think the thumb is an exception to this rule because the thumbs are just badass. <laughs> so yeah. So here I'm just adjusting things up because I'm a lazy bastard. I'll just leave this unadjusted JPEGs to you at the end of this video. I think you will see a link on the bottom of the video where you can download or I'm not sure yet, but I'll send the link somewhere where you can download all of these images. Oh yeah, so here what we have is the top segment of the fingers can bend actually pretty far when pressed against something, something hard. So yeah, it's an exception, but yeah. Here you can see a hand pressing against a wall or something, but yeah. It can bend pretty far if there's pressure against it or if it's against something really rigid. As you can see here. And like I said before it's really just enlightening if you try if you try these things out yourself because we get a better feel of how the fingers can bend or how it can bend but there uh, as it says here or at, as it depicts here there are some exceptions to the rule like uh, sorry like pressing something against against something hard so here i'm depicting something of a commonality to how fingers work when relaxed and if you try this yourself just uh, hang your hand down, hand your, uh, hang your arm down, and just relax your hand. You'll see that the fingers will automatically morph into a more, or rather, <laughs> uh, go into a more relaxed and concave position. That's a huge contrary to what most people do when drawing people in relaxed positions. They tend to just draw the fingers in a very straight and uh, very rigid fashion which is not relaxed at all. Uh, it's curved and relaxed and I think it's easier to draw as well. It's this. Oh yeah, so here I'm depicting another thing that I learned the hard way. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is trying to show the fingers bending as opposed to the hand direction. Or rather, the fingers are bending but not in the same direction as the hand plane. So yeah. 
can see that the arrow that I'm drawing here is depicting the the direction of the hand plane, but the fingers aren't pointing towards the same uh, direction. So I think it's very hard to do this, especially in this position. And here you can see I'm doing the same thing, but I'm adjusting the fingers to adjust uh, to match the direction of the hand plane. I think I did something wrong here. I'm gonna erase something. All right, right. So it's more looking more uh, in tune with the hand direction. I think this looks uh, better or more right rather. Just try to avoid uh, Spain. I don't know the right term, but just try to avoid uh, mm, drawing the fingers in an opposite or different direction than the hand plane because the fingers can uh, bend much sideways from the hand plane if you observe this yourself so yeah So here I am going to show some finger patterns that I've discovered myself or observed through pictures in the internet. So yeah, the first thing is arcs, rather knuckle, arc, knuckle arcs. So to determine the position of the knuckles, I usually draw arcs because arcs aren't uh, aligned in a straight way, straight ahead, uh, just standing next to each other. For most of the time, or rather, forever, <laughs> arcs will all uh, knuckles will always be aligned in arcs. As you can see here, I'm depicting the second knuckle. I'm trying to find the second knuckle position, so I'm drawing the arc. And for most of the time, most hand positions don't need to blatantly show the top segment, the third knuckle, because I don't know, the third knuckle just shows profuse or is shown more prominently when the hand is more tensioned or something, but yeah. So here we can see that the hand is more relaxed, so I just depicted the second knuckle. Finding an arc, of course. So here, I'm drawing a hand that will depict a second finger pattern if I remember correctly yeah I think this hand oh yeah I'm sure so this hand will depict a uh, fanning yeah a fanning finger pattern where the fingers will um, start in a bent position from the pinky pinky finger and continue to fan out until the index finger. So it's like a fan. <laughs> I know any way to describe it, but yeah. So I think this is a very uh, beautiful position and very common position as well. And if you see, or if you know this, uh, I think you will start to see lots of fanning in um, the drawings of people. So yeah, here I am drawing a literal fan just to give a comparison so you can see that this is the same as the fingers where it's, it's just fanning out oh, one thing I like to add, I'm just gonna pause this video for a while one thing I like to add is that uh, for the most part I think that the observation will applies that the pinky finger is usually the most bent one and the index finger is the most uh, I don't know, open one. So from the pinky finger, it's more of a bent position, uh, and as it unfurls, it continues to it continues to just straighten out. 
I think that's for the most part, for for what's uh, for the things that I've heard. But, so yeah, so I'll move on. So the third uh, finger pattern that I, I'm gonna share here is the bunching of fingers. I believe. Oh no, I think this is another fanning. So yeah, <laughs> sorry. So here I'm just detecting another fanning uh, positioning for the fingers. Where you can see, like I said before, uh, the fingers, or rather the pinky finger, is the one that is the be uh, that is one that's bent the most, and it unfurls until it uh, reaches the index finger. So yeah. Just drawing here and just doing a little bit of detailing. But not that much detail. I hate detail. Rather I'm just lazy. I think for the most part uh I try to be simple when drawing hands. I don't like to do so much pair rendering that the simplicity and the clarity of the hand may get lost. So, just connecting the hand to a wrist. Just raising things up so it looks more clear. So you guys can see the construction more clear. Or the pattern more clear. So yeah, I'm adding, uh, I'm adding knuckles, and I drew red lines just to show the fanning action in the last hand pose. So yeah, here is the thing that I was talking about earlier, which is bunching. I think it's easier to imagine this pattern as a uh, oven mitten, or just a mitten in particular. So this applies to when the hand is, uh, or rather the fingers are bunched together. That's why it's called bunching. So you just, to simplify things, you just draw the fingers first as a whole, as opposed to drawing indiv uh, rather individual fingers. Like I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you some uh, bunching action <laughs> bunching technique the secret bunching technique and <laughs> yeah. so yeah take note that I always use a convex shape when drawing the hand plane and here I am messing up and I'm doing things okay. we're back to normal and I just drew notice that I just drew a Oven mitten looking like curve just to depict all of the fingers to simplify things. And from there, I'm gonna add the details. First, the thumb. So, thumbs are hard to do actually, but if you get them right, I think it feels great. It's like, yeah, got it. But yeah, so, you, so you can see here that I'm still adhering to the principles of the knuckle arcs. And I'm just drawing arcs to find the positioning of the knuckles. And I just add little bits of details. So yeah, that's it. I think that's it. No, that's not it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm just doing some cleanup work here. I should have cut it off in the video, but yeah, oh well. So those are the common finger patterns. So here I have made an, a simple animation for how I like to think about the thumb and how I go about in just representing the, the triangle thingy in the base of the thumb. 
So I'd like to think of it as a something of a wing-like material attached to the hand plane. So you can see here that it has a hinge and I'd like to think of this part here or, yeah, this part here as some kind of leathery wing or something and this part here is a metal I don't know, uh, structure so yeah, the first uh, the first movement that this structure can do is open from a closed position and extend it to the side almost at a 90 degree angle so try doing that with your uh, thumb and I think that you will see the similarities of how the thumb works and how this uh, wing-like um, structure that I've invented uh, is similar, it's very similar and can relate to each other. So, yeah. The next thing, or rather the next movement that this uh, wing thing can do is up and down. So, yeah, wait a second. So, if you notice your own thumb, it can move from up to down, up and down. So, it has a wide range of movement and so yeah, I'm just representing that through this um, wing, wing thing. <laughs> Let's just call it wing thing. So yeah, it's moving up and down. So in addition to what we've discussed uh, seconds ago, which is from the side to side, you can also move up and down. So it has a fairly wide range of movement. And as you can see, in here, something that I like to think about, the range of motion is something that I think about as a wing flying, as flapping. So, yeah. I strongly urge the aspiring artist to just try this out. Because I'm not, uh, when I was studying the, the thumb, I'm having troubles in, in finding a way to represent it in a constructional perspective and so far the best success or the most success that i've had is with this and with this um wing thing <laughs> so yeah uh, just play around with it and um you know just copy a few hand photos and try to think about it as this structure so yeah
So here I've recorded or rather um, organized my process into several steps and I'll try my best to just uh, explain how they work and how you can apply it to your own um, process. So yeah, so the first thing is to determine the hand plane direction, which is what I'm doing here now. And I think I've discussed this earlier, so yeah, that's the first step. Then the second step is to search for a pattern in the fingers. And the three that I notice most common that, that or rather the most common that happens is the bunching, fanning and rhythm lines. Whereas the bunching and fanning is the most common. The rhythm lines is the mm, very least that I've seen and I think it's the most difficult to pull up. So uh, here I've uh, I'm drawing something sort of a mm, straight hand and I've used the bunch uh, bunching method <coughs> excuse me and for here I'm using the fanning technique oh no wait uh, I'm just marking where uh, where I've used the method or what am I what am I trying to look at or what am I trying to um, determine to whereas how to or when to use the the method. So here I'm using the binding method and I'm just fixing the hand plane to match the um, the positioning of the fingers. So I'm just drawing the fingers, splashing it out and as you can see here, um, I think it's fairly evident of, uh, that the fanning is uh, just uh, pretty obvious. So, yeah, I think most of it is discovered in the previous um, parts of the tutorial, but yeah, I'm just reviewing stuff here. So, yeah, studying the thumb to complete the look. Uh, notice that I'm just not spending too much time here. Notice that the hands are, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Notice that the hands are just really very rough. Just to give you a recap of the things that I have explained earlier. So here I'm trying to um, use the rhythm lines method, which is just something that I, I don't know, I, I don't really like it at all because it's just, so complicated and I just prefer to simplify things but there are some hand positions that just call out for it where you can't use bunching where you can't use fanning so yeah it's still useful at times but I don't know it's, it's just not, it's just not my preference but it may come in handy so I'm just putting it out here so I think this looks fairly hmm, weird <laughs> I don't know It's a bit tough. Or, I just like to add that there are some hand positions that when you draw them, you check your construction, you check your proportions, and they're all right. But it still comes out looking a bit, uh, looking a bit wonky or off. And I think it's it's just a reality that some hand positions are just really awkward looking so it's up to you to try to organize things into a much more appealing way and yeah I think these three methods are a great start to um, having or putting more appeal into your hand positions so uh, here I'm just doing some adjustments and just like, picking things up And there goes the rhythm lines method. Just adding the tendon. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. So I just checked out the 
Mark we may not call placement to two marks because we use it all the time. Just a reminder. Then we also did that in the previous example. We we're fleshing out the fingers using straight against curve. Which I, apparently I did again here. That's how much I love you guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't. Oh yes I do. Because I'm doing it right here. This is how I show my love to you guys. Or maybe I'm just bored. I'm not really. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, the step, uh, the last uh, step is to connect the forearm and the width and determine the width. Sorry. So I determine the width from the index to ring finger. Which is just a general guideline actually. Most people's hands may go um, thicker than that, especially muscular men, but yeah, this, this, these are all just uh, suggestions, as the title says. So, yeah. I think that's about it. Next stop is. Um, what's the next stop? Oh, things to remember. So, yeah, see you there. As we near the end of this um, hand drawing tutorial, uh, I'd just like to give you some things to remember. So if you're lost or something, you can just uh, look at this and maybe you say, Ah, I forgot about this or I forgot about that. So yeah. So the first thing is that if your drawing looks wrong, check the proportions and construction. This is the very essence of this uh, tutorial right here. Proportions and construction. So. Um, these are your big guns. Uh, don't hesitate to use them. And very, I very uh, strongly suggest. I strongly suggest that uh, you don't skip on doing them. So yeah. So the the second thing to remember is that is to look for patterns. So like I said in the suggested process, um, try to look for bunch of fingers and fanning, or if not, these two. Um, try to use the rhythm lines method. Uh, number three, uh, don't forget your arcs. Very simple arcs are beautiful and um, knuckles are usually arranged in arcs. So yeah, don't forget that. I'm sure you won't. <laughs> number four, uh, spacing between hand elements is important. Don't overcrowd. Yeah, this is something that I've learned um, in drawing hands for the past couple of months. I think most people overcrowd or rather... Um, compress too much in so little space so try to expand your hand plane try to give spaces between things and if you're drawing or if something feels wrong just try to see if this is the problem and number five the last thing to remember is your own hands are the best reference so try to use them so yeah uh, I realized this Mm, several weeks after I started uh, focusing on drawing hands and um, for the first weeks I've uh, used so many online references and I think it's a great tool I think there are great um, images out there great images and references out there that people can use but if you don't have them or if you're just you know too lazy and sometimes you know um, there are there are pictures or there are hand positions that it's hard to find when you're trying to look in the internet. So I think a mirror in your own hands are the best references. That's it. And before I end this um, tutorial, uh, I'd just like to share some final thoughts. Um, I think uh, most people will, um, what do you call this? Most people will, um, <laughs> <laughs> Tired. But anyway, yeah. most people will uh, watch this video, and after this, they will feel they will feel energized about drawing hands. Then they won't draw anything. They won't draw hands. They just um, store the information in their brain, and I think that's a shame because 
uh, the information is already here. All you have to do is to use them in your own drawings. And I think you won't remember these things if you don't do them yourself. So please, 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 if you want to draw better hands, I think it's paramount that you uh, study this video first. Study many videos first. There are other like uh, great videos about drawing hands in the net, and just try to incorporate these things into your own drawings. And I think also that uh, focus is a huge thing in uh, trying to uh, learn something new, like drawing hands. Because if you draw hands for about a month, which uh, is something that I did, I allotted a month, and I spent. Uh, Almost all of my free time doing nothing but drawing hands because I have full time job. But in the evenings, in the afternoons, breaks, uh, I try to draw as many hands as I can. And as of now, I've drawn uh, 400 hands in three weeks, and this is the result of my hard work. I think. So don't get me wrong. I'm, I think I'm just I'm just a novice here, and I don't know much. And I think I have a long way to go, but. You know, focus will, will take you farther than just, uh, you know, hoping and drawing hands um, on the um, off-end chance, on the uh, once-a-week basis or something. It's better to draw hands every day. And I think you will see the results faster. Then, hmm. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, if you noticed, uh, I didn't do variations of the male hand type. I just drew male hands all throughout this tutorial. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think that um, hand construction applies to all kinds of hands. And I think I just did uh, male hands because that's that's my own... I, I am a male myself. I am a male my... I am a male myself. Sorry. <laughs> and I think that it's a great reference that is my, to use my own hands and and it takes it takes very little to adjust and draw a female hand. You just have to uh, make the fingers more slender, etc., etc. And I think that it's up to you to make your own observations and just apply the things you've learned. Remember, proportions and construction are your best friend. And I think that you will do good and you will draw great hands. So yeah. So I think that about. That's about uh, everything that I need to say and thank you for watching this video and I hope that you have a fantastic day ahead. Bye bye.